Hello everyone, Alex here, and today I'm going to tell you all about Prague. I'm no expert, but I am quite familiar with the city of Prague. I studied abroad there. Here's a picture of me watching the sunrise thoughtfully on St. Charles Bridge after a full night of raging at Chapeau Rouge. Yes, I did wear a cardigan out to the club. I am who I am. After my summer in Prague in college, I visited a handful of times, a bunch of times with Will, a couple times with my girlfriends, and I also brought my parents there for a couple of nights. I really love this city and I'm excited to sit down and chat with you about it. I have a lot of recommendations about how to get there, parking, where to stay, food to eat, drinks to try, things to do, things to see, and also info about day trips, and some cultural notes too. I'm really trying to keep it to a list of things that I would recommend to my friends personally. If things are touristy in Prague, it's for a reason, and I've probably done them, and I'm not saying they're not worth doing, but that's just not what I'm gonna focus on right now. I've been totally dreading making this video because the sheer amount of things I have to talk about, but I do think it's really good content, and I really do hope that it helps you plan your perfect trip to Prague. Jumping in, I have some quick recommendations for what I do personally before I go to Prague. I follow a couple local guides, and one of them is The Honest Guide on YouTube. He is a really good resource. He posts a lot of new things that are opening in the area, and he also has the life mission of like cracking down on the scammers in Prague, which I think are a little bit notorious and maybe they're getting better or just sneakier, but he does a really good job of being real about the city. I also follow Prague Today on Instagram, and this is a really good account because every week they post the events that are happening in that week. So for example, when I was there, I went to a food festival or like a food market that I wouldn't have normally known about. I also always check Atlas Obscura before I go anywhere. And I don't think anything new has been added lately, but I think that they have a couple pages worth of things in Prague to do if that's your kind of thing. Okay, we're gonna talk about getting there. Unfortunately, at the moment, there's not a direct train from the airport to the town center, to the city center, if you're flying in. There are plans in the future to do this, but for right now, um, the best you can do is buy a bus ticket for line 119, and that will take you to a metro stop, and then you can take that to your final destination. You can buy tickets at the Prague public transit counters in both terminals or they have some ticket machines that take contactless credit card at the bus stop. You can't buy your tickets on the bus. You can also take a taxi from the airport. It takes like 30 to 50 minutes and I have that at cost around 35 to 45 euros. But by far the easiest thing and something that I've done before is taking a transfer service. You can schedule them ahead of time to pick you up and then they'll drop you off wherever you're going. A lot of them do have a set rate of like 25 to 30 euros, which is like competitive with the taxis. And it's also someone who'll be waiting with you with a sign when you get off the plane. So that is a little bit comforting if you're unsure about entering a new country. Two companies that I have saved are called Welcome Pickups and Prague Airport Transports. I will say about the airport, it is very well done. It's really, it's not fussy. Uh, we've parked there before with our car and it was fun. And I've also, I picked up my parents from the airport and I get a lot of anxiety about picking people up from airports, but it was actually super easy with parking and it's a small terminal, you'll find who you're looking for. Which brings me to if you are bringing a car into Prague. This is how we normally traveled there when we were living in Germany. There's a couple of options. So first of all, you can just get a hotel or an Airbnb with parking included in the city center. And we've done this before and driving in Prague is super stressful actually with the trolleys and just like the cobblestone streets and it's small and you don't know where you're going. And this also severely limits the number of places you can stay because having parking down there is so rare. So if you don't wanna deal with figuring out parking down there, even public parking, I would just, I avoid it at all costs. We did it once and we were like, we're never doing that again. <laughs> what we always do is use a park and ride. We used uh, this one, Z Zlichen, and there are two small parking uh, lots next to each other. I think they're mostly used by commuters during the week because every time I've gone after five or on a weekend, it's been fairly empty. The attendants who work there probably won't speak a lot of English and I've been chastised before for not telling them ahead of time that I was leaving my car overnight. So every time I went there after that, I would just write it up on my phone, Google Translate and show it to them like, hey, I'm gonna be here for two or three nights just so they know what to expect. I'm not really sure the reason, but that's what I've done. In 2022 at least, it was cash only for payment. From that parking ride and probably from a lot of others, they're right at the end of a metro stop. And so it's like 25 to 30 minutes further to get into the city from there. It, it is a little bit cheaper, but it can be a hassle if you have a lot of luggage with you and like lugging up and down the metro stairs and stuff like that can be annoying, but you know, I don't mind. 
Where to stay in Prague? I've stayed all over Prague. Obviously, the Old Town is an ideal place to stay because of your walkability to literally everything. But if you're on a more of a budget, staying next to a tram or a metro stop is really good too. Some places we've stayed personally, um, I've stayed at the Hotel Opera, which is close to Carlin. It was a cute spot. Um, I think I first saw it in a Wes Anderson inspired Instagram account or something like that. But I mean, we enjoyed staying there. It felt it felt old in a cool in a cool way. We've also stayed at the Art Nouveau Palace Hotel off of Wenceslas Square. And I thought this place was like absolutely beautiful. I really enjoyed our stay there. And it was also a good uh, walking distance to the train station if you're coming on the train and also to the old town. Older posts about Prague will tell you to avoid Wenceslas Square basically at all costs at night. I think over the last 10 years, it's changed a little bit and it's not somewhere I would avoid at night anymore personally. My friend and I also stayed at the Mosaic House Hostel, which is a bit south of Old Town. When my parents visited, we stayed in an Airbnb right in the center of everything. And I will say that was fantastic, but it did get pretty loud at night just because it's near bars and there are people walking around at all hours. If you do want somewhere a little more quiet, right across the river in Malastrana, Prague one is a little more quiet and it has views of the old town and you just have to cross the bridge to get there. There are two other neighborhoods where I've never stayed, but I've heard they're a little bit up and coming. There is a bit south of Petron Hill in Smichov. I'm sure, I'm sorry in advance for all my pronunciation in this video, but I believe it's more up and coming, definitely more quiet. I think it's a little bit of a business district with some clubs and new eateries that have opened recently. There's also this district and it is described as eclectic and probably a bit more hipster and edgy if that's your thing. I don't think I've been there, but I'll leave a link below with some recommendations of things to do in the neighborhood. 11 years ago when I was studying abroad, I stayed uh, out in Prague 10, which was a metro ride away from the center. And I think the place we were staying was like $30 a night. It was insanely cheap. So there are affordable options outside the city if that is what you're needing. Ooh, okay, things to do. There are so many things to do in Prague and this is just a small little list of things that I would recommend to my friends if they were going and I can leave some more links below of other activities that you can do. The first thing to do obviously is to take a tour. I've done the free city walking tours and I thought that it was really nice and well done and then I've also done the Rick Steves free walking tour of Prague twice and it is well done. It skips the Jewish quarter and I think it spends a lot of time in Wenceslas Square and in the main town square. It is informative and it takes you to some little places that I wouldn't have known about otherwise. And it's free to download if you have his Rick Steves Europe app on your phone. There are tons of guided tour companies in Prague, so definitely go online and find your own that works for you. Second recommendation is go to a beer spa. I tell this to literally everyone who goes to Prague. Beer spas are amazing. There are several companies that do it, but we personally always go to the Bernard Beer Spas. We've been to several of their locations and they're all so professional and like very well done, very hygienic, always a good experience. Like we freaking love doing it. So how it works is you have one hour, you're naked if you want to be, and you're sitting in this huge bathtub full of like beer ingredients and they have a beer tap next to you. So you have an hour to drink as much beer as you want while soaking in this hot tub full of beer stuff and then you can go lay in like a hay bed or a normal bed with an electric blanket on you so you can soak up all the goodness in your skin. It's really fun. The next thing on my list is to go to an opera or the ballet and be all fancy. Prague has three gorgeous opera houses. There's the National Theater, the Estates Theater, and the new stage of the National Theater. I've been to the ballet and the opera in the National Theater and I thought it was a really good experience, although I do prefer the ballet. I'll put a link to their website and tickets below. It can be pretty affordable. Next up is visit the famous Jewish Quarter. On our free walking tour, we walked a little bit through here, but the Jewish Museum there does offer specific tours of the area if you're interested in more of a deep dive. The former Jewish ghetto was established in the 13th century and it contains six synagogues, a museum, and the old Jewish cemetery. While not located in the Jewish Quarter, Will and I did visit the Jubilee Synagogue, aka the Jerusalem Synagogue, which was really beautiful really colorful and it has an adjoining special exhibit at least when we were there it was all about the perspective of Jewish life in Europe post World War II which we found really interesting I'm going to go through a couple of places with good views of the city if that's your thing one of them is the Clementinum which is 12 euros to enter it houses a cool baroque library and has a gorgeous view of the city on top of the tower Will and I have also gone up to the rooftop of the Terrassa U Prince restaurant right in the old town. 
you pay for a super expensive drink, some Aperol spritz or something like that, but you do have one of those like very Instagrammable backdrops of the old town. You can also hike up Petrin's Hill to the Petrin Tower. You pay a small fee and it gets you up the tower. And if you wanna pay a little bit more, you can take the elevator all the way to the top and that has good views too. Next is the Prague Metronome. This was once a giant statue of Stalin, but it was torn down and replaced in 1991 to symbolize a new era. I've been there before and it is definitely a young people place to hang out. There's a lot of skateboarding and like high school kids hanging out there, I would say. It, they're right, like it's a good place to chill with a beer. I don't think you'd be so out of place to be there if you were older, but just be aware that it's kind of like a younger vibe. The next place I have is a little bit south. It is the Veshaharad Fortress. It is a bit south of the main old town, like I said. It has lovely views of the river and the city. There's also a museum and the entire complex overall has really good ratings on Google. Last but not least, we have the Prague Castle Gardens. Of course, you're gonna go to the castle and the cathedral if you're in Prague, that is fine, do it. The steps getting up there are brutal. If, um, when I visited with my parents, you know, it was a little bit of a trek to get up there for them, but they did it. It was worth it. It was great. This is touristy, but I would totally recommend it. And I bring people here when I go to Prague, I would get the full circuit ticket. It's about $12 per person. And if you want to pay a little bit more, you can get the audio guide, which I've also done. It definitely takes a bit longer, but you're getting so much more information out of it. I want to transition real quick to churches and gardens. There's a lot of them, obviously, but here are some that I recommend. Without a doubt, my favorite church in Prague and probably the entire world is the St. Nicholas Church, which is pretty close to the castle. It's a high Baroque church built in the 17th and 18th centuries, and I am blown away every single time I visit. There is a small fee, but I think it's totally worth it. Nearby is the Church of Our Lady Victorious and the Infant Jesus of Prague. It's a Catholic pilgrimage church, and the baby infant Jesus has been... Uh, attributed with many miracles over the centuries that it's been there. A short walk away and for a little fee gets you into the Furstenberg Garden, which has a beer garden and some good views of the city too. Bonus. Just down the hill a bit are the free gardens of Waldstein. Sometimes you can get a peacock viewing too. There's another park nearby, which definitely has peacocks. I'll link it here. Campa Island is free and a nice place to walk around the river and also houses the Modern Art Museum. Okay, let's talk about museums and what there is to do on a rainy day. Of course, there's a beer museum. I think there's also a craft beer museum, but at this beer museum, you can have four beer tastings in a 13th century cellar, which sounds pretty cool to me. Brewing and drinking beer is a huge part of the Czech culture, so we'll talk more about beer later. Franz Kafka is the most renowned Czech author born in Prague's Jewish quarter. There's a dedicated museum to him called the Franz Kafka Museum, and there's also his giant rotating head statue, which I'll link below. It's a pretty, it's pretty cool to see, I like it. There's also a world of Franz Kafka, which I don't think is specifically affiliated with him, but it looks like very immersive, and I'll link that below if you're into something a little bit out there. Speaking of, if you're looking for something a little bit out there, there is an art gallery that's been on my map forever called the Futura Gallery, and you can take this outrageous picture looking into a giant butt. So, Alphonse Mucha is a Czech artist whose work you'd probably recognize. There is a compact Mucha museum here, and I've also been to the Central Gallery off of the Old Town Square several times. It has Andy Warhol, Salvador Dali, and Mucha inside, and so that's the one that I prefer if you're just trying to get a little bit of everything. If you go to the National Gallery in Prague, there's also a permanent exhibit of 20 massive canvases that Mucha painted called the Slav Epic. And I saw them when it opened in 2012 and they're really fabulous. A couple of museums to know are the Cold War Museum, the Museum of the Senses, which is kind of like an illusion museum, but then there is also like a straight up illusion museum where you take all those like kooky pictures and things like that. There's also the Museum of Decorative Arts, which is good if you're uh, artsy and wanna see some pretty things. One thing I never got to go to was the Alchemists and Magicians Museum in Old Town. They also have a museum of medieval instruments of torture, and I will say this is not for the faint of heart. I haven't been to this one, but I went to one torture museum and I will literally never go to one again. I'll link some more museums below. There's a billion of them. Food and drink. Okay, guys. If you're going to Prague, the things you're gonna do is drink beer and eat meat. That's what it is. I feel like I need to say drink responsibly here, but um, there are a billion places to eat and drink in Prague, and I definitely recommend you to explore, go in whatever looks cool, like find one that fits your vibe. There's seriously something for everyone. 
In terms of food, I'm going to leave a link below that lists 30 traditional Czech dishes that you can try. My favorites personally are beef goulash. I'm a goulash gal and also anything potato. Definitely potato pancakes I think are really yummy. I think that the Czech people do potatoes really well. You're also going to get a traditional Trudelnik dessert. You're just gonna do it. They have stands uh, sprinkled all around the Old Town and they have a couple more permanent places to get them too and they're maybe filled with ice cream or something like that. I like watching them being made but I think they're a little bit messy and maybe a little bit overhyped but you, you gotta get one. You're going to. When I was living there I also developed developed a taste for cabbage soup. It's a taste that I chase and I can never replicate it and it's sad. Like I said, there are a billion places to eat, but I am gonna quickly go through some places that I would recommend to my friends who are going there. I'll try to pronounce them guys, I don't know. We got Bretonski Dower, and this is a good place for lunch or dinner. I'd recommend, I would make a reservation though. There's this place I'm not gonna try to pronounce actually, but it was recommended by our hostel receptionist. Uflaku has gotten really famous and I think it's therefore a bit over touristed. When I was there last time, we were kind of like ushered into a room of other English speakers and I believe like we paid for it basically. The Globe Bookstore and Cafe has an amazing breakfast, really good breakfast burrito. The Arctic Bakehouse is an Icelandic bakery, which is something you don't see every day. Let's see, I'm always craving pizza and so Pizzeria Komotra Kavarna is a good spot. Cafe Slavia is good for traditional Czech cuisine. Radost FX has a fantastic brunch on the weekends. We went here almost religiously when, we were st when I was studying abroad and I always got the Eggs Benedict, or they have this really good like salmon omelet. Rihanna also filmed a music video in the basement club slash bar, so that's fun. When staying downtown, this was the bakery that I went to every single day. When I was with my parents, we ate here at U Spirku, and it was super affordable and the lamb was excellent. Locale is also a good place for classic Czech food. If you are looking for fine dining, I've never been to these places, but we have Le Gestation and The Field Restaurant are both on my list. Cafe Savoy was on my list and is also very highly rated. A note on the Ice Pub, it's super touristy. I've done it twice. Uh, it's kind of expensive. It's one drink, 20 minutes. You get this like hilarious get up to wear and it's, it's just kind of outrageous the whole thing. So I do think that it's fun and it's really refreshing on a hot day. If you want to eat somewhere super beautiful, Instagrammable, I would go to the Municipal House. It's right near the Powder Tower. The interior is like Art Nouveau and is totally to die for every inch of it. I'm obsessed with it. Food was actually okay. Beef cheeks are good though. And it's a beautiful spot to just have a beer, like relax a little bit outside the old town. We're gonna to talk about drinking now. In terms of beer, there are billions of beers to enjoy in Prague. It is a super big beer drinking country. And specifically like for us, Will is partial to Kozel beer, especially the darker ones. I really like Star Promen. One of the most popular beers you'll see, of course, is the Pilsner Urkel, but that's like not really my favorite. You might see beer being poured with a large amount of foam on top and that's called milk. You can literally order a whole glass of milk and it's just foam. From what I read online, it's meant to be taken as a shot, as kind of like a dessert, or it is order for women when they don't wanna drink a lot of beer. I don't like the texture, but you guys can do that if you wanna do something very Czech. If you are there to try some drinks, you're probably going to want to try some absinthe. I've been to the Absinthe 3 Square Franz Kafka near the Old Town Square. Uh, it has kind of more of a restaurant feel. And then I've also been to Absinthe 3 Jilska a couple of times. And I think the bartenders are really, really good. And it's, you know, moody. It's like a little dark in there. It's, it's pretty small. It's pretty cramped. So I wouldn't bring a large group, but I brought my parents there and it was so fun to watch them try Absinthe. Uh, I got my mom the one, uh, it has like a huge thing of ice water and you kind of drip ice water in it to your liking. And then that's how you drink it. I got mine on fire, which is just really fun to watch them do. If you just type in absinthe on Google Maps, you're gonna see a ton of places pop up that have absinthe cocktails and things like that to try. It's also something you can buy pretty much everywhere. I'm actually not gonna share my favorite bars here because honestly, I never want them to change. So I'm sorry, but I will say, everyone is different, but my favorite places to drink are underground. And there are a lot of basement bars in Prague and they're all, I think like super cool and moody. A couple of quick notes if you are planning on drinking in Prague, just know that the metro stop between midnight and 5 a.m. There is a night bus that runs during this time. You could talk to your hotel about like how that 
how you could take that bus back to where your bed is. Or you could just stay out drinking till 5 a.m., which is very doable in Prague. Also, if you have Discovery Plus, there is an episode of Booze Traveler where he's in the Czech Republic, and I think it's super fun, all the things that he does kind of in the countryside and also in the city of Prague, and he talks more about the drinking culture there. So if you have access to that episode, I would definitely go watch it. Okay, we're gonna talk about shopping real quick. There are no shortage of souvenir shops in Prague. They are literally everywhere in the Old Town. I'll leave a link below to some kind of more specific things to get in Prague, but some things that I look for are Bohemian Glass and Crystal. Uh, when I studied there specifically, I got all the ladies in my family a piece of garnet jewelry because that is traditionally known as a Czech royal gem. Puppets and puppetry actually have a place in the Czech culture and history, and you'll see a lot of marionettes throughout the town, so that's kind of a fun gift to give if you have a kid in your life or someone you want to scare. And I, of course, got myself some MUCA posters from the National Gallery. In terms of thrift shopping, there are a couple places downtown. I wouldn't say that's like a big thing there that I've noticed. Um, I've only been to this one. It's a little bit outside the city center, but it's nothing crazy. I'm gonna talk about day trips real quick. So you could be in Prague for a couple weeks and still not see everything, but if you are feeling the itch to get out of the city a little bit, here are some places that I would recommend. The first is a day trip to Chesky Krumlov. This is one of my favorite little places in the country, of course, it's not a secret. I would recommend it for a full weekend, but they do have a lot of companies that will just do a one day transfer or like a day trip from Prague, if that's what you're looking for. It's one of the most fairy tale like places I've ever been and we'll be making a full video about it shortly. The Sedlik Ossuary in Kutna Ora is also a super cool day trip. You can get transfers here. I think there's a train that will take you there. When I went in 2012, we took the bus. It has been a burial ground for a really long time, but I think a bulk of the skeletons came from when the Black Death happened. And there are estimated 40,000 to 70,000 people buried here or not buried here because you'll see their bones are used as decoration everywhere. When I was there, you could take pictures inside, but it looks like you can no longer do that. Um, but I think it's still definitely worth a visit. The last place I'd recommend for a day trip is Carlo Viveri. It's a really beautiful spa town right on the border of Germany. A quick note about events. I would consider the time of year that you're going and kind of do a little bit of research ahead of time. For example, their Christmas markets and their Easter markets are really well known. I've unfortunately never been to any of them, but they're always on my list. They also have their own type of Mardi Gras celebration and there's other annual music and cultural festivals throughout the year and I will leave a good link to that below. Before I sign off, I would love to do a quick little note about the culture and this is something that I always tell my friends before they go there. And if you're Czech and you can explain this further or maybe have a different perspective, I would love to know your thoughts. So when I studied there, it felt a lot different than when I went back and visited in like 2019 through 2022. When I was there the first time, like you could pretty much smoke indoors everywhere. It didn't feel like the city was super accommodating to tourists, but for me that like gave it some of that charm uh, that it felt like you were kind of in a foreign place. Flash forward, it seems like some of that grittiness is kind of gone and that they definitely are way more accommodating to tourists. And it seems like a lot of the shop owners and the old town just in general has changed in a way that's been super impactful impacted by tourism, which makes sense. Day one, they sat us down and scared the crap out of us. And they were like going on and on about pickpocketing, about mug, like muggings. They were talking about students have been attacked. They gave us, you know, all the usual instructions, wear a crossbody bag, never put your bag behind your seat in a restaurant, never uh, put your bag next to you, always hold it like on your lap or literally have your arms around it if you're on public transportation. And so these are things I've never felt like threatened in Prague. I've never had a problem with anything. I don't even think I have any friends who've had a problem in Prague. Just be vigilant. You're in a big city and be especially on uh, alert when you're in really crowded touristy places like on the St. Charles Bridge. Another thing they taught us day one, which I thought was really interesting, was that in Czech culture, uh, it's kind of impolite to smile at people, where coming from the US, like I was so used to smiling all the time at literally everyone, it's just seen, uh, it's seen as more polite, right? But in Prague, what they told us was that it translates to kind of like you're laughing at them or you're like making fun of them in your head or something like that. And so it doesn't come off as being so warm and friendly, it comes off more as mocking at certain times. So I think, uh, that's why a lot of people would stereotypically say like, oh, the Czech people, they're not friendly, but they actually are. They just, that's not part of their culture is to smile all the time at everyone. Even visiting in 2022, like 
I got more of a sense that people were a lot more hospitable. There's a lot more smiling and I, and I wouldn't feel out of place if I was like smiling like I normally would. So that's just something to think about when you're going there. Um, don't be offended if people aren't seeming really friendly. I think that they are friendly. They just are not in the way that you're used to. As always, it's mindful to know the key phrases of please and thank you. So make sure to say please, proceed, and thank you, decree. And that goes a long way. Thank you everyone who's made it this far. It really means a lot. I love Prague so much and I'm so thankful that I have a platform to share and that I never have to send my friends long lists of recommendations again and I can just send them to my YouTube video. <laughs> so that works. It works for me. It works for you. If you love Prague so much and you have good recommendations, please leave them in the comments and I would love to hear from people especially who live there and any recommendations you have or your thoughts on how the city has changed in the recent decades. Please subscribe for some more European itineraries and beyond. I have like a year's worth of videos to edit. So definitely subscribe because they will be coming weekly. And thank you guys again so much for watching. We'll see you next time.